Hello and welcome to the installation guide and review of Inov's radar assisted blind spot detection system. Now Inov have aptly named this the third eye, but they have two versions. There is a mirror version and there is a watch version. Now the mirror version you can mount obviously within the uh, mirrors left and right, but also you can mount these modules in various places at the front of the bike. If you've got a proper sports tourer, there's normally lots of places to stick these little modules or the other version is a watch version. Now the dial does look like a watch, it's about 50 millimeters or thereabouts in diameter. And again, you've got lots of options for mounting. You can mount them on the bottom of the uh, wing mirrors, or you can mount them up the front close to the dashboard, or in fact, close to the navigation system. So we're gonna be looking at both products. I'm gonna mount them simultaneously on the same bike, on the R1250 GS, and then we're gonna test them both side by side and see which ones work best for us on these big adventure bikes. Now, why are we doing this review? Well, the last video of 2023, this one up here, and I'll put a link at the end, was the comparison or the start of the comparison series between the R1250 and the new GS1300, which I, if you've watched that video, I very much liked. Now, one of the things on the, the new 1300, BMW are a little bit behind with bringing some of the latest technology to their premium bikes, but they have new systems on the GS, radar assisted with the cruise control and the blind spot detection. And during that three day test, I actually really enjoyed using those systems. And that got me thinking, what can those of us with the older 1200 and 1250s do to add a little bit of technology, a little bit of life to our older bikes to bring them up to par with these new bikes? Uh, and so I did a bit of research and I found that Inov do make a system which we can retrofit very easily to our older bikes. So that's really what this episode is about. So I've not worked with uh, Inov before, but so far they've been great. Their customer service is absolutely brilliant. Um, and I explained to them that if I was going to do some sort of testing and to help you make the decision between which system to have, the only way really for me to do it is to have both. So they were very kind and they sent me both systems. So what I'm gonna show you in a moment, I'm gonna show you how to mount both systems, show you some of the options for mounting the radar on the rear and some of the options for mounting the LEDs on mirrors because there are lots of locations that we can mount these so that then you, like me, have a better understanding of which one you might choose. So let's start with the rear of the bike. So in the clips you're about to see, you'll notice I've removed both seats, the grab handle and this gray rack underneath. And I needed to do that for filming so that I could show you uh, the connectors, the location of the cables, bear in mind I'm fitting two systems, one up the left, one up the right hand side of the bike. So for me, it was much easier to take everything off and it was only five minutes worth of work. But I just wanna be clear, I think you can install this system on your 1200 or your 1250s without having to remove the grab handle or the gray rack. But to do that, you're going to need nimble fingers and perhaps a long screwdriver or maybe a five millimeter wide, 30 centimeter long cable tie, which you can then use with a bit of tape to help guide the cables from the front of the bike. And then you can decide whether you have your connections and your mounting under your rider seat or as I have, underneath the pillion seat. So we're gonna have a quick look at the contents of the mirror pack. So we've got our instructions, we've got some uh, labels, we've got the rear radar module itself, we've got an installation pack which does have, I'll show you this in more detail in a moment, uh, various brackets and sticky pads for mounting the parts we need to put on the bike. And then we have our control module which we're gonna to mount towards the front of the bike. So in terms of uh, build quality, so far, as soon as you take it out of the box, it actually looks very good. On the rear radar module, for example, uh, this is billet aluminium and the serial number for your kit is actually etched, laser etched onto the rear of this radar unit. And the same goes for the control box or the control unit. Again, there's no labels, there's nothing to fade or fall off. This is all laser etched and it's very well done and it's very clear and easy to read. So we've got our ground cable, which needs to be earthed. We've got our plus 12 volts, which also has an inline fuse. We need to make sure that this is a switched 
12 volt feed. We'll get to that during the installation. Then this long thick cable, and it's actually quite a good length, both of these combined. So we shouldn't have any problems fitting them on the GS. Um, the connection between the control module and the radar module is just this little tiny connector here. And we can't get this wrong. It's got a little locking lug inside, and I'll show you how that goes together when we do the install. And then finally, we've got our indicator LEDs. Now again, what's really nice to see with these, um, they are laser etched and they're handed. So you've got left and right clearly cut into those aluminium parts. So we can't get that wrong. Now also, on the top here, we have our LED indicator that's going to tell us the system is working and functioning correctly. It's done its self-check. And then we've got um, the buzzer output for the audio notifications. So overall, I think in terms of build quality, just taking out the box, the packaging is really good. If I open up the packaging, not that people really spend a lot of time, they have actually put quite a bit of time and effort into creating some very nice packaging and the product looks very good when we take it out the box. So let's have a look at the second kit. Now we move on to the contents of the watch kit. So we have instructions, a couple of stickers, we've got our mounting kit. Now the mounting kit is different to the mirrored kit and I'll show you the differences and the things that are different in the kit when we do the installation. Um, the key thing is the radar module on the rear is the same module. So it's the same build quality, which I really like. And we've got our uh, serial number etched, laser etched onto the back for registration. Um, but the key difference really, apart from this kit, is the interface between you and the, uh, the motorbike. So we've got this quite funky uh, watch assembly, which is probably gonna look great on naked bikes uh, or bikes that don't have big fairings like the GS does. But even so, we're gonna fit this and see what it's like. Now, in terms of connections, it it is even simpler. We've just got the ground, we've got our battery feed to find, which is as per the, the first kit we looked at, it is fused. We need to find a switched 12 volt feed for this. And then we've just got our connector that's gonna go from the front module here to the radar unit on the back. And again, it's the same type of connector as we've seen in the other kit. We can't install this wrong. It's got a keyway on there. So assembly is very easy. So as with the first kit, the build quality does impress me. It looks very good. Uh, let's go out into the garage and let's fit both of these kits and see which one we prefer. So with regards to choosing your mounting point on the rear of your bike, it's not always possible to have it bang in the center of the motorbike, which is what Inov recommends. So in my case, I'm gonna to have to choose between the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the bike. So why have I chosen the left-hand side? That's because I live in Germany and all of my passing traffic on dual carriageways and motorways is gonna be down the left-hand side of my motorbike. And that is where I want the most protection. And that's where I want the system to perform at its absolute best. So what that means is if you're in the UK and you're faced with a choice between left or right in terms of the radar position on the rear, you would be better off choosing the right-hand side of your motorbike because guess what? All of your traffic on dual carriageways and motorways is going to be on the right-hand side of the bike. So that's where you want the system performing at its best. Now, I do have this uh, aluminium top rack mount from Givy for my top box. So I realize that most people aren't going to have this. So I think eventually what I will do is drill an additional six millimeter hole here and mount the radar unit on the back of this. But for the purposes of this video, I think most people that are thinking about installing one of these on their GS, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it with the hardware that you're likely to find on your bike. Uh, and underneath here, this is the standard GS grab handle assembly. That's how the bikes come standard from the factory. The GSA might be slightly different, but that's how the GS comes. And there are underneath here several points that you could in fact mount the radar to. Looking at the rear of the bike, I think a lot of people, including myself, tend to use these little tiny bags that sit underneath 
And inside here, I keep the uh, puncture repair kit and the yellow safety vests. And I don't really want to move the location because it is just brilliant to have it right under here. It stays on the bike all year round. And if I have a puncture, I know where my kit is and it's easy access. If you don't use one of these bags, you could in fact mount the radar unit centrally if you don't use this bag. And there is lots of space in there and it will quite easily fit. And in fact, if you don't have this bag, you could in fact get uh, a camera and a radar unit in this space utilizing some of the space on the standard rack. So what we're looking at here, this is the grab handle assembly removed from the bike. Uh, this is the bag that I choose to use and a lot of people use this. So I'm just gonna lift that off so that you can see where I've mounted the radar unit. So just bear in mind, this aluminum housing, you're probably not going to find on your bike. And what you'll be left with is this assembly underneath here. Now on, on here, BMW have already put us these slots for mounting these bags because BMW also do their own version and very luckily these slots on the left and the right give us a perfect mounting point for the radar. Now there's another option you could drill centrally a six millimeter hole uh, there is a mark out so you haven't got to work out where the center is you could dot punch that and then drill through it bear in mind this assembly wouldn't be on your bike so you could drill a six millimeter hole here and then mount this radar bang on center in the middle of the bike. So I just wanted to show you this so that you could see what your rack is going to look like on your standard GS when you take it off and you've got several options. And this one for me on this side works very well. Another mounting option you have on the 1200 and the 1250 for the radar module is on the indicator stalk mounting point. Now on the 1250, it is a TX30. I think it's the same on the 1200, on the earlier 1200s. And within the hardware supplied by Inov, there are these two brackets, this short bolt and this nut. And assembled like so, you could remove the bolt and then mount the bracket on here. And then what that gives you the option is to have this radar module underneath the indicator. Now, the bracket hangs down low enough not to interfere with the vision of the radar unit. So this is another option for mounting. So with regards to cable routing, you do have a couple of options. If you don't want to remove the gray housing underneath and the rack above it, you can, of course, move the cable behind here and run it along the top of the gray housing and it drops into the space below the passenger's uh, seat. And there is lots of room and the cable doesn't foul on the seat. Uh, that when the seat is sitting on these rubber lugs, there's still enough clearance so there's going to be no chafing and wear on your cable. But there is another option. If, like me, you decide to route this cable that's coming out of the radar our unit underneath this gray housing to keep it all neat and tidy you need to pay attention to what I'm going to say the cable here there is enough gap in between the tail light and the gray housing to feed it but do not under any circumstances be tempted to have that cable going over a support bar there is a metal bar that starts from here and goes across to the other side and if you route that cable over the top, when you refit this gray housing, it will crush and damage that cable. So don't do it. What you actually need to do is go between these two and that cable comes down in a U shape and then there is a gap to take it. If you imagine that is the metal bar that runs across the back of the bike, I'm gonna get the cable to go underneath it, not over the top. So the next step is to remove this central plastic strip and it is easier than it actually looks. So we've got a total of five screws that we have to remove. One, two, these are both TX25s. We've got one on the left-hand corner, one on the right-hand corner, again, TX25. But in the center, we have a TX30 and I'll show you a picture of those in a moment. Um, and then when it comes to the fuel cap, if you've got some sort of tank bag mount, which I have, you need to remove it because the tank bag mount is wider than the fuel cap. So we need to remove that for this plastic panel to come off. Now, the fuel filler cap itself is held in position with six bolts. They're TX25. Now, we're not going to remove all of them. I'm going to uh, take this mounting mechanism off, but I'm going to leave these two screws in place because we don't want to let any debris get into our fuel tank. Um, and then once I've got the screws out, I'll show you how easy this is to remove and where the clips on this plastic panel are secured. So looking at the front of that central panel, we do have three screws, TX25, 
TX25 on the right, and then this central one down here, this is a TX30. Don't be tempted to use your TX25, you'll round it off, you do need a TX30. So let's take the screws out and see what we do next. Now we've removed our five main screws. Do use a piece of cardboard, uh, in the location of where the screws come out because they are different, they're different lengths, different threads, and some of them have collars on, these two at the front. That also means we can't lose them. Now, when we go to remove this panel, there are eight clip points. Now, only four of them here and here are a metal clip. The other two uh, at either end are really just a guide. So let me show you how, how we get this off. You don't need to be frightened. If you follow these instructions, it will come off very easily. So these panels on the side, they will push inwards ever so slightly. And if you push them in, the two front clips, if we lift this panel at the same time, we're just gonna move it a couple of millimeters off, then the clips at the front will come off. So I'm just gonna push in here. You might be able to hear it. That's one, push in there, two. So that panel at the front, these two right at the very front are loose. Now we're going to start down here. We're gonna put our fingers under this and start to lift upwards. There are a couple of locating points and our first two clips are here and the second two are here. So if I lift this carefully, you might just hear them come off. Put our fingers under there, gently increase the pressure. Okay, that's our first two that have come off. There are, at this crease line here, this point and this point, there are two more metal clips and they should just pop off if we move our fingers up, and they do, and then this panel will just lift cle cleanly off. So, so that you can see underneath, two metal clips, these metal clips, these are plastic locators, and we've got these locators at the bottom. So there are eight points in total, and then put this on uh, a rag or some old towel so that we don't scratch it. So at this point, with this panel removed, before we start mounting the cables, we have to make a decision, or rather you do. On this module, the central module itself, the control module, uh, there is an LED indicator, and then there's the audio buzzer, which will beep when vehicles are passing or coming up fast behind. Now, I don't particularly want that feature. I know it can be turned off, so I'm not worried about mounting this up the top next to the handlebar. But I just want to say, you can. I, I've just done a dummy fit. This cable is more than long enough if you mount this up the top, close to your handlebars, because you want the LED indicator and you want the audio, audio warning, this cable is more than long enough to come all the way down past this fuel tank, back under the seat to the mounting point, which I'm gonna have under here. So you do have both options and it's nice to see the kit has cables that are long enough. But if you do mount this up the top, just bear in mind, uh, that your 12 volt, your switch 12 volt feed and your ground wire are not long enough and you're going to need to extend them. So what I've decided to do is to mount it here underneath the rider seat so that I can use a piece of 3M uh, sticky pad on top of the ECU here so that I can then look from the side and check the self-test LED on the side. There still will be some sound coming up, but I'm not too worried. So what I've done, I've removed these two TX25s and these two TX25s, which enable us to give a little bit of flexibility with these side panels so that we can route these cables. Now, bear in mind, I've decided to mount the control module down the bottom. We've only got two cables that we need to run up, one on the left, one on the right, and they've both got LEDs on. And these are very, very small. They're very easy to mount. And all I've done, I've just lifted this up and fed the cable from the bottom for the right-hand one all the way along the inside of that panel. I would say you've got almost a meter of cable still to go, even with the cable at the top of the fuel tank. So we have lots of room. There's not gonna be any problem problem with mounting these little LEDs, maybe on the clutch or brake fluid reservoirs, or even on the side fairings right at the front next to the dashboard. So the cables themselves are plenty long enough, and if there's any excess, we can tidy it up.
Before I refit this center panel, what I've decided to do, because I'm gonna be testing both different versions of the third eye, the indicator version and the watch version, what I'm also going to do is install the cabling for the watch version at this same time. So with the watch version, it's very similar. There are lots of long cables. You don't have any trouble, no routing problems. Uh, we've got our battery connection and our connection that goes to the rear radar, and there's plenty of length on those. And I'll zoom in down below here so you can see what we're gonna do with the battery connections in a moment. But in terms of that one long cable that goes to the watch unit, I've decided to run it up the left hand side. And there is a little channel right at the top here where there are some BMW cables that run through a little gully and that's where I've mounted it. So even with giving myself plenty of room down underneath the seat, I've left a good 80 centimeters of cable up the top. So we shouldn't have any problem mounting this module either on the handlebars or on the dashboard when we get to doing the testing and having a look at the functions between the two modules. So now I can get on and put this center panel back on and carry on with the install. So then we get to cable routing. So we've refitted this panel here, which you saw earlier on, and we've got our two systems mounted. Bear in mind, I've got the, I'm gonna mount both systems at the same time so I can do simultaneous testing over the next couple of weeks. So what I've decided to do, there is lots of room to put your cables. So this unit here, this is the module, the control module for the mirrors version. Um, as you can probably just make out, we've got one wire here, and we've got one wire here. So those indicator feeds, one goes up the left and one goes up the right. With regards to the watch version, there's only one cable at this point, and this is gonna go also up the left-hand side. So with that center panel fitted or refitted, we now can move on to this section here. So the mirrored version, We've got our five cables going in, and then these three here, radar, plus, and ground, then run up underneath this channel. Now there is enough room to very easily, on both sides, feed the cables and move them towards the rear of the bike. Uh, and I will also secure this module onto the top of the ECU with some 3M double-sided tape once I've finished. So the other module, which is the watch version, which is this little connection block here. So we've got the one cable which runs all the way up, the left hand side and at this point here it then goes into three and I've decided to route them up on the opposite side of the bike so that when we get up there and we're doing our connections because I'm testing two systems I don't want all these wires in one location it'll be too confusing so I've separated one system on the left one system on the right let's move up and see what we've done with regards to the ground the chassis ground and the 12 volt switched feed that we need to power both systems So regardless of whether you decide to fit the mirror version or the watch face version, we are gonna be faced with finding a switched 12 volt feed to power our system. So how are we gonna do that? Well, if you do have a Dunali Smart Cam or a Hex Easy Can system somewhere on your bike, you're gonna to have to use one of those 12 volt pigtails so that you can get a switch 12 volt feed to turn on your radar system when you turn the ignition on. And importantly, what that does, it turns the module off when you turn the ignition off. But what I've got here, this is part of the Visor Technic Evo Extreme indicator kit, and this is their switched relay. So what this means is when the ignition is turned on, this relay supplies an additional 12 volts to each of the indicators, front and rear. Bear in mind, if you go back and watch my other video, you'll see they're really super, super bright. Uh, and it's the job of this relay to provide a little bit extra current to support those super bright LEDs. And especially on the front where we have the white LEDs. So, after a quick phone call to Visor Technic, we established that the relay itself is rated at 3 amps. The system, the Visor system, uses nothing like that, so there's plenty of room for adding an additional circuit to the relay. I made a phone call to uh, Inov, and their system consumes 3.5 watts of power, which is approximately, give or take, 300 milliamps on a 12 volt system, and that's both systems. So, to add an additional 300 milliamp draw to this relay is going to be completely fine. So that's the way I'm going to do it. Now, if you can't do it that way, you are still going to have to find a way 
to get a switch 12 volt feed. And it, are you gonna have to do your own research if you don't have Hex or Denali or one of the visor relays, you need to find another, another solution. So just to show you how I've done it. So on the visor system, uh, we've got gray, yellow, red, and black. The gray and yellow wires aren't used on the global bikes, but we do use the red and the black. The red is this wire here, that is the switched trigger feed from the tail light unit which turns on the relay when the ignition comes on and then this other black wire here is the 12 volt feed and there is very little current that's been taken by this unit but this is where it comes to now then we need to move uh, that additional 12 volts to each of the indicators on the rear and on the front and so what in effect i've done here all four wires are joined so we've got all four black wires joined in one point. So to make it simpler for me, I've added, I've changed the color from black to red so that when I use these snap connectors, it's really clear and easy while I'm doing the swapping between each system to determine which wires I'm connecting. So red is obviously the switch 12 volt feed. And then for the ground, what I decided to do, because we've got lots of black cables, I've used green and I've gone direct down this right-hand side of the uh, chassis rail direct to the battery so that we don't have any volt drop. We're not trying to pick up um, a ground point on the chassis, which might not be perfect in terms of potential difference between the points. So this is what I've used, direct to the battery. So now I'm confident I've got a switched 12 volt feed and I've got a ground direct to the battery. And then during my testing, I can switch between one system over here and the other system over here. And it is just as simple with these little snap connectors, lifting the lever up, putting the cable in, snap it in place. So during the testing, this is what I'm going to use. Now, once the testing's done, I will change this configuration and make it more per permanent and tidy it up and probably use some more of this sheathing to tidy the job up. You have got lots of mounting options. I've chosen to mount it here at the back of the bike so that I can just remove the seat and make my adjustments because I'm testing two systems. If I wasn't doing that, I would move all of this lot underneath the rider's seat. That's where I would mount it. But for testing for what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount it here. So let me refit the case and show you what it looks like. So now we're looking underneath the area below the passenger seat. So down here, I'll just pull these out so you can see, I've got my positive and negative requirements and the connection that's gonna to go to the radar unit and they're tucked out the way and I can swap between the two during testing. But with regards to the watch version, which is mounted on the right hand side, let me show you what we've got. So we have our 12 volt feed, which is switched. Mine's coming from the Visor Technic Relay and our ground. And I'm using these snap connectors just for the testing purpose. Um, now with regards to joining the system towards the front of the bike to the system on the rear of the bike, you have this connector. So you hold one side, unscrew like so, a gentle wiggle and a bit more unscrewing and then this pops apart. Now you can't assemble this incorrectly. And if I zoom in on this, there is a little tiny lug that prevents you mounting this in the wrong place. So the way I can best show that is if I turn it off a of phase, bring it together and then gently rotate, all of a sudden it'll then start to slide together. And then what you need to do is gently start to mate those collars together and then you're going to need a firm press and then continue to tighten this, that is the correct um, connection. So then everything fits in very nicely. Uh, just bear in mind, I have chosen to do a slightly more difficult route. This cable here, which then goes rearwards to the radar unit, I've mounted underneath this gray housing. In, in fact, you can mount the whole system without removing the gray rack or the grab handles, but this cable here would then have to run across the top of this panel, which isn't really a big problem. And then the cabling that goes forward, you're gonna to need to fiddle it uh, very carefully with your fingers underneath this gray panel and underneath the cross member bar, but it is possible. So let's move on. 
With regards to mounting the watch unit, I have tried this mounting on the bottom of the wing mirrors, and initially I thought that was a great place to have it, but after about four days, I decided that was the wrong place for me, and I really wanted it somewhere in the, in the central space of the bike at the front. Now, ideally somewhere next to the dashboard or next to the navigation unit. Now, although on the GSs, both the early and the 1250s, uh, we've got lots of room, there's not a lot of hardware mounting options in the kit. So we are gonna have to do something in addition to what is supplied with the kit. So what I've decided to do, if I move that out the way for the moment, this is the back of the navigator unit. Now, whether you've got a 1200 or a 1250, Navi 5, Navi 6, the mounting mechanism to this bar is the same. So standard, these bolts that come through from the other side are 30 millimeters long. And as you can see from these lower ones, these bolts don't stick out far enough so that I could mount an additional bracket to these points and put some nuts on. So what I've done, trip to the hardware store, um, and you can get these in various different lengths. This is a 35 millimeter, which is what these two are here, or you can get them in 40 millimeter. You can also get them with Torx or Allen key and the same head design as the original one, as you can see from this, so that it fits into very easily, in fact, perfectly from the other side. So then what that enables us to do, this is a stainless steel L bracket. You can pick these up from your hardware store. They come in so many different sizes and lengths. I've tried a couple of different mounting points, but let me show you what, what eventually it's going to look like. So this is going to mount on here on these extended bolts, and I've got five millimeters of room so I can put some nylock nuts to hold this firmly in place so that I can then mount the watch unit on the side. Now you might be thinking this is too far or it's sticking out too far but I don't yet have the navigation unit in. Let me mount it and show you what it looks like. So with regards to ignition on and startup, a couple of things to point out. First thing that happens is self-start test. So those three flashes in red tell us that the system's done a self-test and this blue LED, the motorcycle that's illuminated, is telling, that, telling us that everything's in order. Now you might not be able to see it, but in the center here, there is a speaker symbol and there is actually a button. Now if I'm quiet and we press it, that single beep turns off the audio warning and that's the preferred way I like to ride. Um, I have tried this unit mounted at the bottom of the, um, the wing mirror, but I didn't like it. After a couple of days, I realized that actually where this needs to be is somewhere in the rider's main view of the road, uh, and this was the ideal place to mount it, but unfortunately there's not enough hardware parts in the kit that comes from Inov to mount it, hence I had to go and get an L-shelf bracket and, and buy some extra bolts. But now it's mounted, I'm very happy. I think what I'll do if I decide to keep this and not the um, mirrors version, which we'll look at in a moment, I will probably take everything off uh, and powder coat it black so that it blends in with the rest of the bike. But so far I'm very happy, it's really firm, it's in the right position, It's very easy to see and read. Um, one thing to note, once you've turned the audio system off, if we then turn the ignition off, and in of, if you do watch this video, could you do a little bit of um, programming? If we choose as riders to turn that audio warning off, can it please stay off? Because currently, when we turn everything back on again, it's gonna go through the self-test, which is fine. but it also does all this beeping. And then you have to press that center button again to turn everything off. So it hasn't remembered our choice to turn to deactivate the audio system. So it would be good with a bit of programming if you could remember that. Um, okay, so let's now uh, carry on and let's have a look at the install of the mirrored version and where are we gonna mount those LED indicators. So now we move on to the installation of the modules for the mirror kit. And that's these mounted on the left and on the right. Now, the modules are designed to go on your wing mirrors. And that is the first place I tried them. And in, in terms of position and location and visibility in terms of your eyes, 
it's perfect. That is the perfect place for them to be. However, what I didn't like was then having to run the cabling down the uh, mirror stalks, then down the bars and along here. And for me, it was just a little bit too untidy. So I thought there must be some other places I can try. So the next one was on the left and on the right on the clutch and brake fluid reservoirs. And this has got a lovely flat piece of aluminium uh, and the, the, these little modules stuck on there really well. And initially I really liked it. The only problem mount with mounting them here is because the angle of this surface is almost 90 degrees. Uh, the light source from the LEDs actually shines directly at your chest and not at your eyesight. So then I thought, well, there must be another place I can try. So I took them off and cleaned these up. The next one I tried was to the left and the right of the TFT. Now, the only way to really mount them on there, um, I, I went and got some aluminium, some 90 degree aluminium and cut an inch off of it on both sides to try, the, to try this mounting option. And what I found was on the right hand side here, it worked perfectly. But on the left hand side, we've got a little problem. And that's because uh, as we saw earlier on when we were looking at the watch face, that little symbol in the center there for that speaker is actually a button. And the same applies to this module. So when you start it up to turn the mod to turn the sound off, you have to you have to press quite firmly. And what I found after a couple of presses of this button, I was beginning to push um, the sticky pads away from the side of the TFT. So that really wasn't going to work in 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 terms of long term use. But in terms of um, location, I think that was the perfect place. So then eventually I moved on to mounting them on um, two flat panels on these little winglets and they, they do work really well there. The angle is almost perfect in terms of um, directly at the eyesight. Let's turn the ignition on so you can see what it looks like. Same startup sequence. So we got our sequence of buzzing, our sequence of flashing, which is the self test to let us know that everything's okay. And then if you do want to turn that audible warning off, we do have to press this. If I'm quiet and you have a listen, that one beep from the module, which is mounted under the seat, lets us know that it's turned off. So because depending on which system I keep, I am gonna to wanna to turn that off. Um, mounting this on the side of the TFT, I couldn't or I haven't yet found a really secure way of making sure that I can push that button and not dislodge it from the side there. However, overall, that's both systems now fully mounted. Oh, the cables, by the way, they're very, very easy. Um, because these panels, you've got um, TX25 left and right, you can very easily run these cables underneath this little part of the fairing. Um, you curl up the excess that you've got, use a cable tie, and, and it's very neat and tidy. So a few more important points. The instructions that come with the Inov kit are really good. They're very well written, and I would recommend you spend some time reading those instructions first, and then use this video as a help, as a guide, alongside those instructions, because it is important that we read what the manufacturers recommend before we go ahead with the installation. And that will just make everything run very, very smoothly. Um, and you're also probably wondering, where is the actual review, part one, of the systems out on the road on the bike? Well, what happened was the, the, the kits came from Inov just before Christmas. And then during the week between Christmas and New Year, I installed everything and spent about a week out on the road uh, testing the systems to make sure I was happy with them, that they functioned correctly, and that they did everything that I wanted them to do. And also, I wanted to make my decision as to what system I was gonna keep on the bike. And then I brought the bike back into the garage, dismantled everything, and got ready for the preparations for doing the install guide. <laughs> but what happened in that week Winter arrived here in Germany really very fast and we've had nothing but snow and ice on the roads ever since uh, that point. So I've not been able to go back out and film the segment I probably should have filmed in the first place. Uh, so that's still to come. So that will be part one and in that episode I'll explain uh, what the systems do, how they function, how they work, and go into much more detail about the radar systems themselves. So that is another video still to come as soon as <laughs> the ice and snow go and I can get back out on the road. 
So where to buy and discounts. This is always a tricky one when we're buying parts for our motorbikes. Uh, quite often it is very easy to find um, manufacturers parts sold by third parties all over the internet and sometimes it is very tempting to buy from them because you might get a 5% discount or something like that but generally they'll be cheaper than the manufacturers recommended prices. The problem with that is when you come to have support or you've got a technical question, you're trying to do an installation and you want some help and support, quite often these third party resellers don't actually provide that. They're not interested. They just want to sell the product. They're not really interested in supporting you and ensuring you have the best experience with the product. So uh, what I generally try to do is order direct from the manufacturer um, or at the very least, their approved distributor within a given country. That probably is the safest thing to do. And you'll also get a good level of customer service and you'll get fast responses to your emails if you have any questions. Um, now, Innov have actually been really good. Not only have they sent the two systems, uh, but they've also given the channel subscribers a discount. 10% discount, you, you're gonna buy it direct from them. Uh, I'll put that code up in, the mom in a moment uh, and just use that code at the checkout. So in the video description below, you will find links to both of these products. I'll try and organize them for UK, Europe, and North America, so you can find them very easily in your geographical location. As always, I've had a lot of fun putting this installation guide together. They do take me quite some time, normally two or three weeks. There's a lot of filming, there's a lot of editing, uh, but I do know that the subscribers to the channel do appreciate the time it takes to put these together, because then when you go to install these products, it is fairly easy to do, especially if you read the, um, the manufacturer's instructions first, which in this case for Inov, they're very good, they're very clear and precise, very well written, you shouldn't have any problems, and as you've seen today, they are actually very easy to do. Anyway, thank you for your time, and I'll see you very soon.